Hi, Christian, Ian again. Christian, this is that second um, tool I wanted to show you. It was the, it's the tool or the app that you can load on your phone and set up on a on a web on a web browser, and then um, ultimately you'll be able to to export and save the um, the data you capture from a form and import it into QGIS. So the the page that it, well the the the, um, the tool is called GIS Cloud. Ugh, okay, what's the spelling there? Something like that, and you can load it on uh, on um, an Android or an iPhone, as far as I know. Now this is uh, what the what the web page looks like, and and this web um, web service allows you to create your own maps. Uh, but one of the things it does is it allows you to create forms, which you can then um, edit and populate using your cell phone. So I've already got an account, so you'll just need to create your own account. I'm just going to log in here to show you how it looks and works. Okay, no thanks. Uh, okay, so what do you want to do first of all? Let's say we want to capture new information. Uh, we start a new project. Okay, so we're assuming we've already downloaded it onto an app, or, I mean, onto your phone. I'm going to say create a new project, and we're going to call the project. Uh, uh, let's just call it Creole Bosch. Um, okay, demo project. Okay, and then now we can add the the um, the content for the form. So we're going to uh, ask it to 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 query the user or or to to prompt for for information from the user. So we can say, oh, he has a few defaults. We can say the text. Okay, this is the text type or the or the field type. And can, we can just call this um, let's call this number. So if we can make this a number, number, and then this can be street. And this we can. What other data can we have here? Let's just leave this one for now, and then you, if you want to add new fields, you can add the um, geographic location, the, 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 the x and y values, so lat and long, so we're going to say add new field, and longitude, add new field. Now these will be captured automatically every time you, you capture a, a new um, feature, so you don't actually have to punch anything in here, but it gets saved into, into the database. And what else? Uh, you can take photographs. Um, where is a photograph? A photo. Okay. The thing about the photographs, though, is that it, it does use up memory. And sometimes, if you if you've got poor cell phone reception and you want to upload while you're in the field, you capture something and you want to upload it, it can take a while to to upload to the server. But I think for this little example, this should be fine. So I'm going to export these or save this project. Then I'm going to open it on my cell phone and walk around the neighborhood and capture a few things and then come back in and uh, download and display it in uh, QGIS. So let's see how that looks. So let's create this project. Okay, I need a name for this first of all. Photo. What's wrong with photo? Can't I say photo? Okay, it's happy with that name, I think. There's the preview. That's nothing special, and you can put anything in here, really. Date, um, meter readings. I mean, if the water guys could use this for meter readings, that sort of thing. So the project's there. It's on. We can actually turn this off and uh, open the application up on our cell phone. So that's what I'll do next. Okay, so this is us opening the, the, the application on the cell phone. And you can go to the settings, uh, or you can choose, first of all, choose your form. And then you can also adjust your settings. Uh, but we're just going to go to the form and uh, catch our first, capture our first record. And this is uh, house number three in Cambia Way. And um, we'll just capture this one and, and a couple others 
as, as a matter of interest, these are three houses that are for sale in the street. So this might be an application for an estate agent or, or whoever wants to log the houses that are being sold. So we can take a photograph, add that to the record, and then uh, after we've pressed send, it'll queue the, the record and it'll be updated or uploaded next time you are within range of your, of your Wi-Fi. One of the settings you can choose is to actually um, upload via your, 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 your data that's on your phone. But uh, if, you, if you don't want to waste your own data, you just, you just queue the information and that'll automatically upload next time you connect to your Wi-Fi. So this is the, that was the second house, number nine. And I think I just capture one other here. I think it's number 14. So let's capture number 14. And that's also all these, all these houses are on the same street. So that can be a way as well. And I think we'll also just take a photograph for this one too. Okay, and there we go. Once the photo has been snapped, you press OK. If you don't like it, you can retry. And we click send. Okay, so what you can then do is upload uh, that queue via your Wi-Fi, and then have a look at it. Uh, if you look at the map, and as you can see, this uh, we only got one record in place here, and that's because the others haven't synchronized or, or been uploaded yet. But as soon as those are uploaded, those little points, the yellow dots, will will be represented for those sites uh, or houses that have been captured. And this is just a quick look at the at the queued uh, list. And these are the ones that still need to, to be uploaded. And once those are uploaded, we'll download the CSV and open it in um, QGIS. Okay, so we're back in Firefox or in your, in your web browser. And we're back on the GIS Cloud website and we've logged into our account. And we can have a look at our, at our project that we have uploaded. And there we go. Okay, so there's a there's a list of the the records that have been captured, and here are the locations for them. You can select them, and it'll be able to to open and see exactly which one it was. Fairly straightforward stuff. And then we just need to export that to a CSV. So let's just click on export to CSV or download to CSV. Okay, we're going to generate the CSV. Once that's done, we just click on it to download. And that'll go download that somewhere, whatever your preferred or chosen folder is. And click OK. And we'll open that in QGIS. Okay, so what I've done is I've created a, a little folder here inside my University of State project file. And here's the CSV, which I just need to extract. Okay, so we're going to open it to here. There's the CSV. If we double click that to open it and then uh, have a look, we've got our street number, our street, latitude, longitude, and then this is the, so this is the other thing. So the any photograph that you take will be uploaded onto the site. And I think depending on the size that you need, you might need to get an account to increase the size of your site. Otherwise, you can download them from your phone and store them locally on a machine. You would just need to then go ahead and change the path name of this uh, of this path here for the photograph. So we're just going to leave it uh, just as is. Let me close this down. I don't have to save that and open up. Our okay, so we've opened up a, a new QGIS project, and we want to use. We're going to use uh, some of the data from our tutorials. And um, where are we going here? Tutorials. I think tutorial. F yeah, the linking attribute data had a careful wash shape file. We'll just go grab that one quickly. There it is. And say open. There we go. So there's there's a, a few urban which is will be in the same location as this stuff we want to add. Just quickly change this color because I don't like this color. This is just me faffing, really. Oh, okay, so let's open, let's add that CSV which we downloaded. So we just need to browse for it, and it's in it's on our desktop. 
projects special GIS cloud Kerbal Gouache. Right there it is. And everything's been prompted already. And this will be um, the, the coordinate reference system for this will be WGS84. So let's open that. Select WGS84. And it should be, if you can't find it, just minimize everything and then go looking under the geographic coordinate system at the bottom. Sorry, the WGS84, or it could be in your previously used uh, coordinate reference systems. We say OK. And bang, there they are. Okay, so it's as simple as that. We've uh, we've managed to to capture it using that that um, that application using Android or, or your iPhone, and then from that website, we've all we've done is export the CSV and then opened it up here. So it's a nice way for you to to integrate um, stuff that you've captured in the field into a, an existing project. So that's that's pretty much it, really. The the tool is there's nothing much more to it than that. So yeah, give it a crack and see if it's useful for yourself. Otherwise, I hope uh, I hope this has been useful. Um, give us a shout if you have any questions. All right, cheers.